Okay, so we've looked at pressure and temperature of gases. Second part of this is Boyle's law. Boyle's law relates the pressure to the volume if this time we're going to keep the constant temperature. So we're going to keep the temperature the same and we're going to see how the pressure affects the volume. And then we're going to try and move on from that to put the whole thing together. And then we're going to try and look at how the amount of gas relates these things to each other as well. Because obviously the thing we've kept so stand the same so far is the actual amount of gas in the situation. That When I say the amount of gas, I mean the number of moles of gas or the number of uh, particles of gas that are in the system. Okay, so Bohr's law relates the pressure to the volume of gas. So think what do you think would happen uh, if you if you decrease the volume of a gas, what's going to happen to its pressure? Well, the sides of the container are getting closer together, so you've got a smaller distance between the collisions. If you've got a smaller distance between the collisions, you're going to get more collisions per second. Each collision has got the same average force because the particles are moving at the same speed because the temperature of the gas is the same. So we're going to increase the pressure. Okay, here's a little animation to try to make that clear for you. So here's two gases. The gases are at the same temperature. You can see the particles are moving at the same speed as each other. But this one is going to hit the edges more often. Therefore, it's going to create a higher pressure. Okay, simply because it doesn't have to move as far in between each collision with the sides of the container. Okay, here's a the experiment that you might have seen so you can measure the pressure of the gas and this scale here will allow you to measure the volume it's just a length but because the cross-section area stays the same the volume is proportional to the length okay you can plot a graph of just um, how the pressure affects the volume and you get this kind of relationship an inverse relationship or of course you could plot a graph of p against 1 over v and get a straight line okay this is a little animation which just shows you if you increase in the force you decrease the volume. Not very happy with the particles that are going on here, but hopefully it helps you to see the idea. Okay, so we've now got two laws. We've got that the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure, and we've got that the pressure is proportional to the temperature. Okay, if we put all that together, then we get this relationship. The pressure times the volume divided by the temperature is a constant. What that tells us is if we are changing two of those things at the same time, we can still work out what will happen. Sometimes this is written as P, P1, V1 over T1. This is the pressure, volume and temperature in some set of conditions, which we call 1. It's the same as P2, V2 over T2, the same um, properties in the condition that we call condition 2. So a little example here, we take a helium weather balloon, we release it from the ground where the pressure is 100 kilopascals and it's 20 degrees C. And it starts off with a volume of half a cubic metre. By the time it's gone 30 kilometres up into the atmosphere, the pressure is only 5 kilopascals and the temperature is reduced. It might look a bit tricky because obviously the temperature's um, sorry, the temperature's a lot colder, which would make the volume decrease, but the pressure's a lot lower, which would make the volume increase. But we can put all that together. So all we have to do is to put the set of conditions 1 here. So we've got P, V over T, so... The pressure is 100 kilopascals. It wouldn't really matter since they're both in kilopascals, but just be correct. We'll put the kilopascals in there. Times volume of 0.5. Crucially, the temperature, we've got to add on the 20 to the 273. And that's equal to the volume, um, sorry, the pressure at the high altitude times the volume divided by the temperature here again, 273 minus 50, because we're at minus 50. Just turn all those numbers round we end up with a volume of 7.6 cubic metres. Okay, just one last little bit on this. So Avogadro said that the, num the same volume of gas under the same conditions contains the same number of particles. So he said one mole of any gas occupies 22.7 decimetres cubed. Again, the chemist's missing was a little bit here. This is a 10 by 10 by 10 centimetre cube at 100 kilopascals and 0 degrees C, that's its volume. So rather than saying P1 V V1 over T1 is a constant, we can actually say that we've got a set of conditions here where we know that PV over T is a number of moles times some constant. So we can work out this constant. Okay, all we've got to do is to put in this one set of conditions, so 100 kilopascals times 22.7, this is decimeters cubed, so we need to divide it by 1,000 to make it into cubic meters. Um, is 273, 
that's 0 degrees C in Kelvin, divided by the number of moles. Well, this is 1 because we've said 1 mole of any gas is this. That gives us a number, and that number is 8.31. It's got some um, slightly strange units, joules per Kelvin per mole. I'm not going to talk about these too much, but hopefully you can see it's per Kelvin because we've got a temperature on the bottom here. It's per mole because this is for 1 mole. And the joules comes from pressure times volume. If you might want to have a little think about how pressure times volume becomes joules. I'm not going to go into that here. Okay, this is called a molar gas constant, capital R. And it's usually written as, so the equation is usually written as PV equals N, where N is the number of moles, times R, the gas constant, times the temperature. Okay, so now we can not only relate the conditions of one gas that's changing conditions, but we can actually work out any of those things given that we know the number of moles of gas involved.